Welcome to Rid on the Reef for a sometimes different but always analytical perspective. Now before we can talk about some of the supposed threats to the Great Barrier Reefs, the main one being climate change and the effect of agriculture, we first need to do a little bit of a geography lesson. And because of the incredible geography of the reef, this is not going to be a chore. The Great Barrier Reef extends from the tip of North Queensland down to about here and it's offshore and if we zoom in we can actually see each of the individual 3,000 reefs that make up the Great Barrier Reef. And they are absolutely exquisite. There's nothing like this on Earth. We can come in and see these phenomenal tidal channels between some of the reefs. Incredible. Now from the point of view of climate change, we've got to remember where we are uh, relative to the equator. So the equator runs up here uh, around Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, where the water is considerably warmer than it is on the Great Barrier Reef, especially the southern Great Barrier Reef. Now it's important to note that the same corals that live here also live to the north in considerably warmer water already. And it's also interesting to note that this area uh, around Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, the Philippines is sometimes called the Coral Triangle. And it's called the Coral Triangle because this is the area of the most diverse coral on Earth. And it happens to be in the largest body of hot water on Earth. Now, yes, they're the, the most diverse corals, but they don't have the massive reefs that we do on the Great Barrier Reef. But it is interesting to note that already the same corals on the reef, or the Great Barrier Reef, already exist in much warmer water. From the point of view of the effect of agriculture on the reef, the important thing is the reef is a long way offshore. So if we zoom in on the biggest uh, sugarcane growing region, intensive agriculture on the Queensland coast, this region here, we can actually see that the reef is the best part of 100 kilometres from the coast. And this mitigates uh, any effect of pollution that may be running off the land, the sheer distance of the reef from the coast. Another reason why the reef is in incredibly good shape is there's very little people pressure on the reef. So from the south to the north, the number of people living along this coast is probably about 700,000 people, not even a million. And the, north, the northern part of it, say from about here, just a bit north of Cooktown, right to the tip of Cape York Peninsula, which is a distance of about, well, 500 kilometres, 300 miles, the total population along that coast is probably about one or two thousand people. So this is one of the least populated, unspoilt places on Earth. Similar size region, say, in Indonesia, uh, where there's a lot of uh, reefs as well, you'd be looking at, you know, tens, maybe a hundred million people. Uh, in these sorts of areas, or the Caribbean where reefs have been badly damaged, you're talking about 50 million people uh, living in some reasonable proximity to the reef. This is not the case with the Great Barrier Reef. Now we've also got to look at the sheer scale of the reef. We can see here that it's bigger than Germany, it's more or less as big as the United Kingdom, almost as big as Japan, heck it's almost as big as Texas. Well, that gives us the scale of the Great Barrier Reef, but what about the individual 3,000 reefs of the Great Barrier Reef? So if we zoom in, and this is the area of the Ribbon Reefs just off uh, Cooktown, we see the individual reefs. The water around these reefs is, say, 100 metres deep. Further inshore, maybe only 50 metres deep. But if you go offshore, you go down what's almost like a cliff edge down into water, that's in the order of a thousand meters deep. This is what we call the continental shelf break. So this stunning image of uh, the same area done by Deep Reefs, which is Rob Beeman's, shows the ribbon reefs uh, on the, what we call the continental shelf. We call it a shelf because it's very flat. It goes from naught meters down to about a hundred meters depth, and then it just falls over the cliff edge down into well over a thousand meters. Now these reefs, they come up to the surface, but they do sit right on the edge of the cliff. 
Or if we now look even more closely at the reefs on the continental shelf, we see they're incredible. They're these flat-topped hills with almost vertical sides sitting on a plain 50 to 100 metres deep. The sides of the reef just come out from the depth and either up to the surface or almost up to the surface. And in this image you can see uh, reefs which haven't quite made it to the surface. So these ones here, maybe in another couple hundred thousand years, will get there. But how? How does the reef grow from 50 to 100 metres depth up to the surface? The answer is that coral grows on the bodies of its dead ancestors. Coral, unlike timber, is made of a substance, calcium carbonate, which is not much different to concrete. It doesn't rot and it lasts literally millions of years. So as coral dies and gets obliterated by a cyclone, as it has in this case here, it builds the reef up and it slowly works its way up inexorably to the surface. So this brings us to the history of the Great Barrier Reef and you can see it very clearly in the geography. It clings to the edge of the continental shelf on a lot of it very close to the cliff edge. But of course, the sea level was not always at the level that it is today. So if we consider the last 500,000 years, there have been the great swings in temperatures of the glacial and the interglacial period. So at the moment, this is the now, we're rather hot, but if you go back 18,000 years ago, the temperatures were cold. Uh, you go back 120, 150,000 years, again, it was hot. In fact, even hotter than it is today. Well, when the periods get cold, of course, the ice caps get bigger and uh, this takes water out of the sea onto the ice caps and essentially the sea level falls by over 100 metres. So in this period here, the sea level was around 100 or so metres or more lower. If we go back to 120, 130,000 uh, years ago, it was roughly the same as what it is now. So you can see that these massive uh, swings in temperature have caused the massive swings in sea level and this has had a profound effect on the Great Barrier Reef. It couldn't be more profound in fact. And that's because if the sea level is 100 metres lower this area here becomes dry land so the coral reefs become dry, they become flat topped hills covered in trees and grass on this long, wide plain with rivers running through them and out to the deep ocean. So all of this area would have been dry land and the sea edge would have been along what is now the edge of the continental shelf. And of course, when the sea level then started to rise, these flat-topped hills would have become islands. Can you just imagine what this area would have been like? All of these flat top islands surrounded by blue, ski, blue sea along a 2,000 kilometre length of coastline. So when we look at very long time scales, the reef only grows in brief periods. So the last 10,000 years, then 120 odd thousand years ago and these periods. The rest of the time it's dry land. So it takes a bit of time for these reefs to slowly uh, get up to the surface, but the sea level is a crucial factor. It can kill the reef in a matter of a few thousand years. But surprisingly, if you look very closely at these, you can actually see that the temperature's fallen a little bit in the last 5,000 years. And in fact, along the, the coast of Queensland, the sea level has fallen by about one metre. Now the effect of this about one metre sea level fall over the last 5,000 years can be seen on many of the reefs. This is Lodestone Reef and you, uh, you can see this is what we call the front of the reef, very deep water here, a lot of live coral growing along there and a fair bit of coral at the back of the reef. This is calcium carbonate sand with coral growing amongst it. But here is what we call the reef flat which is largely dead and the reason it is dead is because at a very low tide, this actually comes out of the water and coral does not like living <laughs> in the air. So this is, these are areas which are now bereft, more or less bereft of uh, coral and that's because of the sea level fall over the last 5,000 years. And so we see the incredible history of the Great Barrier Reef which goes through cycles of regrowth and death 
over time periods from hundreds of thousands of years down to mere decades. The reef is in fact just a thin veneer of living coral sitting on top of a coral graveyard. And this should put in context when we hear the reports of the supposed death of the Great Barrier Reef. The facts are actually far more interesting than the media hyperbole and also far more encouraging. Thank you.